Good morning, housemates. As we discussed, I was given the task of learning the game Root to teach at our next game night. I'll be re relating my sense of the game, the concepts, the story, the motivation behind each faction in the game Root. Root was designed by Indiana native Cole Worley and published by Leader Games. The box is 60 to 90 minutes, but I think we should probably plan on a couple hours for our first game. Uh, the game plays two to four players, and while it plays well with three, the ideal game is probably best with four players using every faction available. There's a couple expansions which raise or lower the player counts, but I'll just be talking about the base game today. There are four main factions from which the players may choose, and each has a very different style of play. There's the birds in blue and the woodland critters in green. In the mythos of the game, the birds are a kind of fearsome upper class. They break ties and swoop in with a powerful ferocity. They operate out of the airy, which is a, a bastion of their might. The woodland critters, meanwhile, are the downtrodden working class whose people bring varied cultures to the forest. While the green player only controls the actual woodland alliance, I think it helps to understand the plight of the foxes, rabbits, and mice, which appear on the cards and on the board. Another faction you might play are the cats. Cats, of course, are not birds or critters, but rather demons summoned by the Dark Lord Asmodeus himself. Or, I suppose, some dude named Marquis de Cat. Anyway, the cats are striking up the machines of war to take over the forest by force. Lastly, again, just in the base game, is the Vagabond. Now, personally, I think it would be a little more on theme if the Vagabond were like a bat, sort of fluttering between the birds and the beasts. Uh, in, in, in Root, the Vagabond is a curious raccoon, and he's very cute, so deal with it. Anyway, the Vagabond gets to explore the forest and discover stuff in the ancient ruins while working on secret quests. They must always balance what they do with their relationships to other factions. So, each faction has its own style of play. Each player has a player board which outlines possible actions, game phases, and available resources. There's a lot of info on these boards, which are pretty well written and designed. The cats are playing a war game with area control, supply lines, raising troops, building structures. The cats get points any time they build. That means even if an opponent destroys their buildings, they get to rebuild for more points and exert their military strength. The birds use programmed actions to maintain a consistently defended plan. The birds get points for the total number of roosts they build, but they lose points if at any time their pre-programmed decree cannot be obeyed. The Vagabond is all about resource management and political alliances. Instead of building armies, the Vagabond can build tools, or buy them from other factions, to accomplish a secret goal, aligning themselves either with or against other armies. The Woodland Alliance's central concept is the slow buildup of resources while no one's looking. The critters are ever present. They must mobilize supporters, which are used to spread sympathy to the cause. Sympathy gets you points, but more importantly, sympathy provides a foothold for revolution. A revolt takes more supporters, but it gives access to bases, which are used to raise troops and officers and establish a battle-ready military. So that's how everyone's different. There's a few universal truths to the game. On the board, factions usually want to gain the majority rule in a clearing. To move into a clearing, a faction must either rule the source or the destination. The clearing type will usually indicate the card type needed to perform an action, although bird cards are always wild. Each faction can use cards for different purposes, but the Card texts themselves describe a variety of events and strengths to be gained for future or immediate use. While each faction has their own way to get points, this is a war, and you can always get points by attacking opponents, soldiers, and buildings. Combat is done by simply declaring attack and rolling these two custom D12 dice. Usually, the attacker uses the higher number of the two, and that many enemy troops are eliminated. The defender uses the other die as their counterattack. There's a a number of ways the outcome of battle can be affected, including army size, faction abilities, and effects from cards. But that's basically how combat works. The first player to reach 30 points wins. Special cards may change the win condition. And in fact, there's a lot of detail and fine print that I'm not really covering here. But that's it. That's the game route. Housemates, I'll see you at the game table.